Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple trickier ones than the polynomials. You can see neither one of these are polynomials. So the first one here in the top left, uh, g of x. Let's go ahead and and uh, let's rewrite g of x. By the way, I don't like it. Uh, I don't like g of x written like that. We've got x squared minus 6x. I'm going to write that to the one fifth power. Okay. So then I can just oops. Then I can just um, Use the power rule, power rule slash chain rule. And so we have g prime of x is equal to 1 fifth multiplied by the quantity x squared minus 6x. And I'm going to have to subtract 1 from 1 fifth. So I'm going to do that in two steps. I don't like to try to do too much here. 1, not, not really clear. 1 fifth minus one, but I'm going to write it as five fifths. Okay, and then I need to multiply all of that by the derivative of what's inside, and what's and the derivative of what's inside is the derivative of x squared is two x, minus the derivative of six x, which is six. So I've got that, and then now I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that, and um, I'm going to do this little little steps at a time. We've got x one fifth times x squared minus six x one fifth minus five fifths is negative four fifths. Okay, and that gets multiplied by two x minus six. And I want to rewrite this as well in terms of a fraction so that it's much easier for me to see when f prime or what is this g prime is equal to zero and when g prime doesn't exist. So I don't want to put a g. I want to put two x minus 6 in my numerator and in my denominator we want to write uh, 5 times the x squared minus 6x and that's to the positive 4 over 5 okay now if you think about it uh, we could also rewrite that denominator now in terms of a uh, the radical form and if we write it in radical form we see that the root, remember roots grow in the ground, so that's the root right there, the 5. And so we have 5 multiplied by the fifth root of all this stuff. And all that stuff is x squared minus 6x. And then that all gets raised to the fourth power. I could do that. And then, um, so, I know that... Uh, yeah, I just had a, had a thought here. But anyway, I know that at a g prime is equal to 0 only when the numerator is equal to 0. 2x minus 6 is equal to 0. Add the 6, divide by 2, and I get when x is equal to 3. Okay, so that's one critical point. And then the other critical point would be when g prime does not exist. So here's a good, not necessarily rule of thumb, but something that is important to remember and when you have a fraction, the, the g prime, the fraction, is going to equal 0 when the numerator is equal to 0. Okay? So, numerator. Okay, numerator. And we want to know when the fraction doesn't exist. Well, that's when the denominator is equal to, e equal to 0. So, denominator equal to 0. D-E-N for denominator. Okay? And so, this denominator is equal to 0 when x squared minus 6x is equal to 0. Okay, and if we factor out an x, we can see that clearly x when x is equal to 0 and when x is equal to 6. So we have three critical points. I should have put red around this one over here. It would have looked much better. But we have x equals 0, x equals 6, and over here x equals 3. Those are our three critical points for that function. Okay. Let's look at this other one, okay, r of x. Uh, we know that r prime, uh, maybe I should do it in a different color, r prime of x is equal to, we know that the derivative of any ln function is 1 over that stuff, x squared plus 4x plus 14. Now, um, I'll get to that. Multiplied by the derivative of what's inside, and the derivative of what's inside is 2x plus 4. Okay, well, let's go down to here so we know that r prime is equal to 0 when 
the numerator of the fraction is equal to 0. So 2x plus 4 is equal to 0. And so if we subtract 4 and divide by 2, we see that when x is equal to negative 2, we have a critical point. That's when the, the function r has a horizontal tangent line or when r prime is equal to 0. Okay. And then uh, let's check that within the domain. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 plus 14. So negative 2 is within the domain of the function. So yes, that is a critical point. And I should point out here that critical points only occur within the domain of a function. You can't have a critical point outside of the domain. <clears throat> and so uh, let's use that in let's use that information here to figure out if f if r prime is ever uh, not going to exist within the domain of this function. Okay, so if you think about the domain, that stuff right there, whatever you're taking the log of, see this is why it's important in calculus to remember everything you've learned since you've been born, but uh, what you're taking the log of must be greater than zero. You can't take the log of zero and you can't take the log of a negative number. So we already know that whatever x values we're going to use to graph this function have to be uh, within the restriction that whatever you're taking the log of has to be positive. So the only way we would find a critical point for r prime not existing would be when, when uh, what you're taking the log of or what this denominator is now. Okay, oops. So this denominator now it says that uh, x squared plus 4x plus 14 would have to equal 0, but again, guys, that's outside of the domain. But this is impossible, and again, because it's outside of the domain of the original function. So we don't even have to consider that. So in this case, there are none, no critical points from the R prime not existing, and so we just have one critical point. That's the answer. That's the only answer. That's, uh, so we're done. Okay. All right, your turn. Here you go. I've got, uh, I'm at the seven and a half minute mark, so I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, show the solutions to these two problems, but I would like you uh, to pause the video and do your best at finding the solutions. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a new video for these, but go ahead and uh, do these anyway, and then uh, just play the new video.